and then I will mute. You can unmute on yours. All right. All right. Turn your volume on. Um, I'm very excited today to welcome Chin Chin Yi. Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, close. <laughs> um, she is the lead maintainer of a really cool project called p5.js. And she's going to talk to us today about um, being a maintainer, um, care work, and accessibility. I hope that she might have time to demonstrate the tool um, and answer any questions people have about being a maintainer of an, a really cool open source software project. So without further ado, take it away, Shane Chen. Thank you so much. Um, hi, thanks for having me here. Um, I don't know how many of you are there in the room. So if it's possible, I'm curious if I can see the room or because I can only see a few faces on the Zoom. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, sweet, cool, uh, I will just get started, um, um, again, uh, thanks for having me here, like I said, uh, my name is Chen Chen, I also go by Q, the first letter of my name, uh, I'm an artist uh, from China and currently based in LA, uh, I lead P5.js at the Processing Foundation, and I also teach creative coding at USC Media Arts and Practice. Today, I will share some of my thoughts about care work in open source software. So for folks who uh, do not know what P5 is, uh, it is a friendly tool for learning to code and make art. Uh, it's a JavaScript library that aims to make creative uh, expression and coding accessible and inclusive. It was initially created by Lauren Lee McCarthy in 2013, uh, 11 years ago when she was frustrated by the lack of diversity in the open source world. She felt alone as a woman of color and wished for a space that was more welcoming to queer trans women and queer uh, people of color. Uh, after almost 10 years since the project was created, uh, P5 has now has more than millions of users. Uh, it has been used and taught around the world as an intro to programming for participants who uh, never coded before. This slide that I showed here uh, shows P5 workshops for K12 in uh, uh, K12 K12 coding workshop in New York for elders in Korea and workshops in Chile and Nairobi. I actually taught myself how to code via P5 almost eight years ago. Um, David mentioned that uh, I will introduce like what is my role like as a maintainer. Uh, but I think it might be it might make sense for me to share a little bit about my journey, how I landed on leading this uh, open source project. So I will talk about my journey with P5 in a like a brief timeline. Um, so in 2016, I made my first P5 sketch. That is a screenshot of GitHub commit I made in 2016, which is a simple P5 sketch drawing el ellipse. At the time, I just left my architecture job in San Francisco and was interested in teaching myself how to code. I started binge watching a bunch of coding YouTube videos uh, I'm mostly coding trained by Dan Schiffman, and P5 was my intro to programming. I did start it with like uh, C Sharp and Unity, uh, but it was not very beginner friendly. So I immediately switched to something that makes uh, that's more friendly for someone who never really coded before. So P5 was the one that I was uh, trying to get myself to code uh, a little bit every day. Uh, my first involvement with P5 community was in the Diversity with Code and Art project curated by Shelley Jean in 2017. Shelley invited a group of Asian creators to show sketches on P5 homepage. I was only a beginner of P5.js back then and I have just been making P5 sketch for fun. And it was really surreal to open the P5 website and see my flying uh, Superwoman sketch as a homepage uh, background for a few weeks. Uh, so um, at that time, I thought, wow, this P5 community is quite different from my understanding about software. It's actually inviting and welcoming for beginners just like me. In 2018, I helped translate a small portion of example on P5 website to Chinese, which was part of a Processing Foundation uh, Fellowship project by Kenneth Lim, who is my mentor right now. Um, 
At that time, Lauren invited me to uh, make a sketch for PFAP homepage to celebrate the launch of PFAP Chinese translation. Uh, uh, so I made this sketch inspired the Chinese um, uh, landscape uh, painting. Uh, in 2019, I made a series of P5 video tutorial in Mandarin called QTV as a Processing Foundation Fellow, uh, mentored by wonderful Dorothy Santos. The project started with the idea of teaching my mother, who lives in China and doesn't speak English, how to code with P5. I couldn't find many P5 coding tutorials in Mandarin on Chinese video platforms, so I decided to record uh, some myself. I wanted to make the coding tutorial feel intimate and grounded. So I recorded most of them in my backyard with birds chipping and leaves uh, rustling and an avocado tree uh, in the background. I wanted to share with the audience that I was teaching coding in a real physical world, not a code mat matrix online. I was interested in exploring non-Western narratives while teaching coding. So I used examples like Chinese calligraphy brushes and urban villages in Shenzhen when I explained what random is. I also invited Mandarin speaking creatives as guests. That was a really fun project. Um, and in the summer of 2019, I was invited to participate in the P5 Contributor Conference hosted by the Studio for Creative Inquiry at Carnegie Mellon University. I was in a group focused on P5, P5 internationalization led by Aron. I made my first and only vlog for the conference. This was my first time meeting so many P5 contributors in person. I remember leaving the conference feeling inspired and energized. P5 has been largely an online community, but this sort of uh, in-person gathering has been so important. Uh, and then uh, in, in this sort of physical gathering, in-person gathering, uh, the community also made a lot of um, um, uh, community-wide decisions, which I will touch upon later. Uh, after my own fellowship, I started to serve as a mentor for Processing Foundation. The first project I mentored uh, is called P5 for 50 Plus, which I briefly mentioned earlier when I was talking about P5's taught at different places. So this project is by ying Wah Yim and Song Yang Kim. This project aims to enhance digital literacy and the rights of people who are older than 50, uh, who are 50 plus. Inwa and Song Yang created a teaching material tailored for the age group and applied them to workshops, as you can see in the photo at top right corner. Um, Inwa and Song Yang gave a talk and named P5 for 50 plus, how to include older, uh, older adults to coding education in the GS conference in Korea that year. Um, the second project I mentored was P5 Teach page, also with Inwa. And now the, we, we just revamped re our website so now uh, a lot of this material here is actually in our tutorial page. Um, in 2021, Cypress, Evelyn, and I started to uh, co-lead P5. I wrote a short essay about leading P5 is like tending a garden. I talk about my grandmother's garden in rural China and how it influenced my, my way of thinking about community work and the P5 community. So this is a meme. Uh, I, my poor attempt to make a meme uh, about how it started and how it's going when, P, uh, when the P5 co-lead role was announced in June 2021. Um, and then started in 2022, uh, I started to lead this project as a sole lead uh, full-time. And most recently, uh, I attended the OSPO for Good Symposium at United Nations where I met David, who invited me to this talk. Uh, it was such a uh, inspiring experience to see the world outside of crit P5, outside of crit coding, to get to know a lot of like open source uh, practitioners in different fields and OSPO uh, leaders in universities and in industries and also in governments. Uh, so we, we are very excited to connect with more OSPO uh, um, um, in the in US and beyond. Um, so that was my quick journey of uh, how I started with P5 and what I've been doing with P5. Uh, it got me to think of uh, that working with open source software, you know, is always like working with people. Behind every open source project, there are people with um, real feelings and bodies. And, and then for me, I think one of the quotes I really like um, from some of the speakers in the OSPO 
symposium and also from some of pre previous community talk is like we came for the software and stayed for the for the community. So, uh, like I said earlier, um, working in the open source space, like if uh, while we think about like you know the digital software, but in the end we actually, especially in the open source community part, we spend a lot of time dealing with we spend a lot of time you know working with people. Uh, so that's got me to uh, the part of a uh, second part of this talk um, uh, about like what kind of uh, community work I've been doing as a P5 lead. So uh, as a P lead of P5.js, I got this sort of comments a lot. Your software should just be a neutral product. Your feature list is not long enough. You don't fix bugs fast enough. Your releases are too slow. You need to scale faster. You are not technical enough to be here. You are investing your time and resource in unnecessary and unimportant matters. Your software is too political. Um, I felt like um, uh, before we uh, like uh, respond to that sort of the comments, I'd like to ask some few questions. You know, um, like some this is some question I asked myself, and I also like to ask this, uh, share this with with the audience. Like, can we challenge the way we were told? about how open source software should be built. Uh, we ask questions because solutions won't matter you know, if the questions were wrong. So some of the questions I'm curious about is that, do you see the human faces behind software when you're using it? How does software make you feel? Can the concept of care itself be open sourced? How can we take care of each other? How can we foster care and intimacy in online spaces like GitHub? Is platform we use for software uh, development accessible for all? How can we prioritize care intention, slowness, over speed in our work? How do we create a safe and welcoming space for new contributors? How can we make the software and community accessible to disabled people? How do we empower contributors? How can we distribute financial support to a wider community of contributors without being in a capitalist framework? What are the steps we need to take from coding to caring? Care is a heartbeat that activates the P5 project, in our opinion. And uh, we believe that care is a foundation, not the ceiling for open source software. Care work can take many different shapes at different time in different scales for different people. Um, so for P5 project, uh, there are many ways that I consider as a care work in, the, uh, in open source space. Making new contributors feel welcomed, safe and comfortable is care work. We invited new contributors uh, into the space with accessible onboarding documentation skill sharing, peer mentoring, and friendship. Writing documentation is a core act of care for P5. We use simple language, avoid technical jargon, provide beginner-friendly examples and explanations. In the screenshot, in the um, slides that I share here is a con uh, P5 contributor guideline uh, in English, also in Spanish, uh, simplified Chinese, and Korean. Uh, recognizing and highlighting all type of contributions no matter how seemingly small is care work. Besides code, we recognize and document all forms of contributions, like, on, like a list on the left side, a left, left side, writing documentations, providing design to the website, organizing event, um, and more. Uh, so this uh, contributor list is uh, listed in our readme uh, uh, file uh, and the release notes, as well as our P5 website, um, so like you can see like some folks, they added the uh, emoji that indicates what sort of contribution they do. Uh, we, uh, as of today, I believe we have more than um, 700 uh, P5 contributors that come from different forms. I believe there are more, uh, we just haven't added them yet. If you have contributed to P5 in all different capacity, please feel free to go to the GitHub and add yourself. There's a pinned issue uh, on the, uh, at the P5 GitHub, uh, P5 Library GitHub repository to, uh, to teach you how to add yourself um, in, uh, in the contributor list. Um, the creator of P5.js, Lauren Lee McCarthy, wrote an essay about making P5. And I wanna just share a quote here. Uh, we were contributors. We could see that our open source project had so many more needs than just code. We do need a lot of code contributors, but beyond that, there are so many other ways people can contribute to it. If you, uh, if you still remember, like my first contribution to P5 wasn't coding, actually it was translation. So translation was how I guess, how I started with contributing to, to open source. 
Um, and then uh, decentralized decision making and leadership model is also care work. Uh, interested P5 uh, contributors can take the role of stewards. Uh, highly engaged stewards can become maintainers with access to merge pull request, a way for contributors to suggest changes to uh, code repository and take part in decision making. Uh, it is impossible to build open source software we want following the long genius myth. It is dangerous to rely on one person to make decisions for one community. Can we open source leadership? Can we make spaces for others to lead? Creators inevitably carry bias of their own. Um, so when creating tools, it's especially important to have a diverse um, diversity of perspectives. So we have P5 Steward Open Call. Uh, that's also um, open. Uh, it's open, also an open issue on P5 uh, website. We are planning to, the last open call ended last year, uh, end of September. We are planning to have a new open call sometime later this year or early next year. Um, setting boundaries and uh, reminding contributors to take a break in order to avoid burnout is care work. The human bodies behind software could feel burnout, lost, and anxious. While timely communication seems vital for community building, there's no rush. Having to say no also helped us clear our vision. Uh, in, two, in the contributor conference that I attended in 2019, the P5 community made a collective decision that P5 will not add any new features except those uh, increased access, uh, as shown at the slide at the left side. Uh, the access here means inclusion and accessibility. Um, when, but when you know, maintainer and contributor burnout is real, we need to focus on what is really important for us. Uh, so with this guideline on what is most important, uh, for P5 community, which is access. We have been doing a lot of accessibility related uh, uh, workshops and uh, events. At the right side of the uh, slides, you can see uh, a group of um, contributors are testing the P5 uh, project using screen readers and stuff like that. Um, so now when you request a new feature at P5 GitHub repository, you'll be asked this question uh, right here. So right after you request a pull request, uh, um, there's this question here, how did this new feature help increase access to P5 community? And uh, if folks feel like they're not sure, they can just type unsure and we can, uh, we can continue the conversation in the comments and they can edit the um, access statement of their feature request uh, later. Um, I think for us, we consider this as also a, a opportunity for us to um, enhance or broaden our understanding of how certain software features can increase access. And we've learned from, we have learned a lot from the community of um, how, like, for example, like HTML table could be useful for um, uh, screen reader users when they are, when, you, when, when they need like a, a list of information, stuff like that. And um, we, but, but sometimes we do see contributors just leave like NA or say like, oh, why do you need to make your software so political? That's where all those comments are from. But it has been really empowering uh, to see like the other community members who are coming and like chiming to uh, share like why the access focus is important for this project. Um, organizing in-person and online community gatherings is care work. We, want, we wanted to see the community come together online and in the real world. So we organize P5 Community Salon, P5 Access Day, P5 Contributor Conference, Processing Community Day, um, uh, et cetera. Um, navigating conflicts and working through different opinions in open source project is care work. Uh, the open, we open sourced our um, community statement, access statement, code of conduct and we believe that they should be living documents that are constantly updated. While having guiding community documents like a code of conduct is significant, the true challenge lies in the enforcement with empathy and uh, sensitivity. We need to have check-ins to talk about feelings, to mediate, to follow up, to confront toxic behaviors, and to tend the scars sometimes. Um, I often find solace in the metaphor of garden when 
when reflecting on P5 as an open source software and community. Just like tending to plants requires attention, care, and nurturing, our software ecosystem thrives when we prioritize contributors over product and value relationship over speed. I often hope going to P5 GitHub repository um, uh, used to uh, make and manage changes to an application software is like going to like online picnics. I've come to realize that I want to work on software that not only for creative expression, but also connects me and others in, uh, with tenderness. And this is like a, uh, me, uh, this, this is like a screenshot of my uh, GitHub green score and how it tend to uh, like a garden uh, using AI tools. Uh, working with open source software is working with people like I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, open source software, software with open source software like often appear like faceless, hiding the individuals behind them. However, you know, like behind every software project, there are real people with feelings. I'm interested in highlighting the human part of the open source projects, uh, often by sharing memes. You know, when I release P5, like uh, there were some real memes that I shared when I released uh, software with my own account, of course. The, the P5 account will have more official release note, but I also want to share with the community, like I do sometimes get confused or like I'm scared of breaking the library when I, when I, when I, when I release it. But in the most recent releases, you know, things are getting more and more stable. And it's also really interesting to think about like, oh, the date and time when you release uh, software. And uh, that, that's uh, one of the screenshots when we release 1.6, we gave shout out to all the contributors, especially the first time contributors. Um, yeah, and uh, for a P5 lead, you know, that's not really a typical day. So this, I don't know if the title here uh, is accurate, but this was one day uh, of leading P5. And you can see like the, um, there are so many different type of works there. You know, there are about attending the GitHub repository. There are, talk, there are like, if, um, there's some tasks about like talking to the communities and updating the website and stuff like that. Um, so care work is the foundation for P5.js, not the ceiling. Uh, like I mentioned in some earlier slides, care work is making new contributors feel welcome, safe, and comfortable. Care work is uh, recognizing and highlighting all type of contributions, no matter how seemingly small. Care work is setting boundaries and reminding contributors to take a break in order to avoid burnout. Care work is organizing in-person and online community gatherings. Care work is navigating conflicts and working through different opinions. Care work is de decentralizing decision-making and leadership model. Uh, I really like this quote from artist Amy uh, uh, Wibowo, also goes by Stella HG on internet. Uh, she said, let's put the soft in software. And sometimes when I, when I feel, you know, disoriented in my role, I often thought about this quote. Um, I actually also open source my research about care work uh, in open source in this link. Uh, I had a arena channel with all the, um, readings and like documentations that I read about uh, care work in, com in community, building care work in software. Uh, you can find them in the bit.ly OS dash care. Um, uh, I wanna show that most recently there is a uh, very active ongoing project in P5, which is we are working on P5 2.0. Um, uh, P5 1.0 was released a while ago, may too many years ago. Uh, so we have been working on 2.0 uh, in the last past years, and we are actively looking for contributors who are interested in working on this. Uh, this screenshot actually is a little outdated. A lot of them are actually uh, either completed or is in the part of the implementation. So when you go to the um, P5 GitHub repository, you will see uh, some pinned issues that's there about 2.0. So if you're interested in contributing to P5 and be part of the to final release, we really would like to welcome you to come take a look. Uh, the first contribution could be just leave a comment in the issue you're interested in, in participating, or um, if you are care if 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 you have a, some proposal you'd like to make for the 2.0, you can also open open one uh, there as well. Um, so that's my quick uh, introduction of myself and the community, and you can find my information here. And uh, after this part, I can also, like David mentioned, 
uh, about a demo of P5. So I'm gonna uh, go to the website and like show you like some quick demos of P5. Uh, if that sounds good. So I do have to ask, sorry, sorry. I do have to ask, did your mom learn how to code with P5? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my mom is trying. Like I, uh, so actually, um, she was learning it with my uh, nephew, uh, who's like five years old. So I think they, they consider that as like a family bonding time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions before I demo the, the project, uh, feel free to ask that as well. I know that we kind of went through things relatively fast. Mm -hmm. I think a demo would be good at this point. Yeah. And it's not going to be like a real, real demo. I'm just going to show you uh, some simple sketches and stuff. Um, okay. Uh, you share the screen. Okay. So here is the P5 uh, website. We, re uh, we did a, um, this is like a new iteration of it. If you are looking for the old site, you can find them right here. Um, so on the P5 website, uh, we want to like, because P5 has been such a visual project, so we want to make sure people can see what, you know, P5 can do. So we actually included a lot of P5 sketch, uh, P5 sketches from the community on our homepage. So these are all the projects that's uh, down uh, in P5. Um, the part you so uh, here is like standard. You know, this is our reference, and there's like a lot of tools created by uh, a group of educators and some examples of P5, uh, and, um, and we also include a lot of like our contribute doc here. And there are also some GitHub, uh, but we, we think it's important for folks who visit P5 website to take a look of how they can get, uh, how they can contribute to it. And for the community part, I wanna show you like what kind of work people have been doing with P5. So in the community part, we have sketches and libraries and events. So sketches are the work that people uh, made with P5. And then uh, we also have a lot of add-on libraries, uh, people uh, like contributors created on top of uh, like using P5. Um, so for example, P5.brush is an amazing add-on library to make custom brushes. When you, uh, when you click them, you, it will take you to, the, um, uh, to, to their uh, repository or website. Uh, P5 Capture is also amazing. Uh, like there are different ways to capture P5 sketches. And MO5.js is not technically built on top of P5, but it, uh, it has been like a sibling project. Um, so it's like, and they actually named them, named their library kind of like inspired by P5. So it's machine learning uh, on web uh, that's like de uh, developed by a group of uh, contributors in uh, NYU. And there's also a lot of community events right here. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the sketches here first. So, uh, in the community and sketches part, you can see like there are a lot of amazing work. So for example, if we click here, uh, all this work here are uh, hosted on open processing, which is a, uh, you can view the code here and you can also um, go to open processing directly. So you can show, when you uh, get the code here, you can see like, that's what the code did. Uh, that's what the code uh, that creates this sketch work. Uh, this is this is like a sketch work that's making um, guidance, and uh, here's like around 200 lines of code uh, for the sketch part. Of course, there's other uh, other other parts. Um, and uh, okay, let me get back to the the okay sketches. Yeah, and then uh, scroll down, you can see like the more. Um, amazing sketches created by contributors. We did an open call for the community, to the community to uh, ask them to submit their um, sketches to be shown on the homepage. And this uh, co collection is created by, um, is curated by a uh, curator's eye. Um, and maybe we show one or two more. Uh, so this is also pretty, so this is like, as you can see this sketch, she's like uh, responding to my, um, to my uh, 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 mouse uh, movement. And you can take a look at the, um, 
the, the source code right there. And this is also a very beautiful sketch that's created by a contributor from Japan. That's maybe taking a bit of time to load. Uh, uh, yeah, so this one, like every time you refresh, uh, yeah, it will create different, um, um, like a color palette uh, and different uh, patterns. Uh, and and you can see uh, the and with some like Japanese uh, text on top. Okay, and maybe I show one more and then I will do a live demo. Uh, so this is also a really fun. Um, um, you can see like we have actually a few sketches that with text and so this this one is like the the sketch is interacting with my with my mouse. Um, yeah. So you can see more of those uh, PFAS sketch work in the community sketches and or if you just go to open processing, there are lots of PFAS sketches out there uh, from, uh, from the community. So if you want to get started coding, you don't need to download the IDE or you open your text editor. You can just click start coding right here, which will take you to uh, PFAS web editor. So PFAS web, web editor, when you, when you open it, your screen might look slightly different than mine. Uh, like for P5, you know, accessibility is such an important part for the project. So we actually have a lot of accessibility uh, uh, settings uh, you, you can use. So I use high contrast when I uh, when I make demos. Uh, so your my yours might look like this. So I'll just stay with high contrast. Um, the P5 default uh, JavaScript file is called sketch.js. It's not called script.js. And we name it uh, uh, intentionally for that because uh, we hope you know the P5 uh, code piece is like a sketchbook you can do it on. So it sounds less scary for beginners. Um, so it feels like you are just sketching. You are not uh, like a writing scary code just yet. And left side is where you write the code. Right side is where you um, preview. And we also, when you open the editor, you can see like we have a few six lines of code here already set up for you. So you are not starting from a uh, uh, empty uh, 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 file. You're starting from a canvas that's already created for you. So all you need to do is come draw stuff. So like one of the first um, um, uh, sketches I always do is to draw circles. And oh, uh, we also have this like autocomplete uh, feature here, if uh, like which is uh, friendly for beginners. If they're interested, they can. If they want to learn more about what this is, they can click and get to the reference. So first, I'd, I'd like to just draw a circle. You know, in the in the middle of the um, in the middle of the uh, of our canvas. Here we go, <laughs> and then we're like, all right, uh, that's a little bit too simple. Can we do something interactive with that? So. There's uh, something that's really fun. It's like mouse X, mouse Y. If you want to create, um, you know, something that's like start to follow your mouse like this. And what if you want to make a, a brush with that? So uh, for P5, you know, function setup uh, runs once, function draw runs um, every time when the program is code. So if you, you move your background to the function setup, then you can create like a, a brush like this. And if you feel like you want to add uh, some interesting, uh, uh, variations like you can start to uh, use like random so for example if I want to create like a, a brush that's like with different uh, sizes you know here we go we haven't even used color yet so now maybe we can uh, just say uh, let's see um, let's see what could be a good color 100 uh, and then uh, we, we can add some opacity here so it's like so now here we go, we are drawing some bubbles with different opacity. And if we don't like the stroke, we can uh, turn it off. Um, and then uh, you can create like something like this. Um, and if we want to add a color, <laughs> let's add a color. Um, so we can add some like a random RGB value uh, to like, um, oops. Uh, here we go, RGB. Uh, yeah, now we are creating like some P5 bubbles. And if we don't want the opacity, we can get rid of that. Uh, and here, this is like uh, a fun <laughs> P5 uh, uh, like brush, which is created with a few lines of code. 
um yeah this is like a most simple this is like simplest demo i feel like it's only like nine lines of code but i hope that demonstrated um how uh fun it could be and it's like it's like a it's a sketch uh it's literally like a sketchbook and i taught my nephew how to do it and my nephew was like five years old uh and then uh he had a good time yeah if you have any questions about this project or the tools or overall the open source um community of p5 feel free to ask yeah so i do have a question then i'll turn it over to others to ask too mm -hmm. um but i guess now that you're the maintainer and you probably interact with maintainers of other open source projects how do you think this differs from what you hear when you talk to other maintainers in their approach to maintaining their packages? Um, it's actually surprising to know that I actually don't have a lot of opportunity to talk to other maintainers, uh, but we are trying to uh, do more of that. So last year, we uh, I attended a conference called Open Source Software for the Arts. Uh, and then I met a lot of maintainers like 3.js or like maintainers like for Hydra, that's mostly uh, like open source project like with visual arts part. So it was very interesting to see like how different projects are maintained and how communities are being supported. Some uh, projects, you know, the, maintain the maintainer, current maintainer are still the creator of them. So P5 project, uh, like Lauren Lee McCarthy was leading it for eight years and then opened up the leadership role to the community. So then I was one of, that. then I was the first full-time lead for that. So Lauren has given me a lot of freedom and like, uh, autonomy to decide what, what should go next. I'm, I'm actually also in the transition of rotating out of my role. So we'll have the next lead to come in because I've been doing this for like almost four years. Uh, so I think it's important to open up the space for the next lead. And then the next lead can bring their fresh perspective to what the community needs. And uh, um, so I think the, the type of like rotating leadership model is something I observe is one of the big significant difference of the P5 project and others. Uh, and also the, um, the decentralization of decision-making is something this, uh, the, this project is really trying to, to foster a bit more. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, we have the steward, contributor, steward, maintainer system that we're trying to build. So we are not just fully rely on one maintainer to make decisions because it's dangerous. And that's like, it's also impossible for, to, to expect that one single maintainer would understand everything of this of this code, uh, because this code is like uh, the the piece of uh, P5 libraries has been contributed by so many people over so many years. Um, so for someone who are familiar with WebGL, might not have not might not have a lot of experience with P5 DOM, for example. So how should we like bring other people's opinion on this and then uh, have them being part of the decision making? Is something I myself very interested in curating, uh, interested in exploring, uh, in, in the community, and I think the lastly the biggest difference would be like this is a software with a strong focus, uh, on access. Um, I think the P five project is not interested in being like a a do it all toolkit. Uh, we want to like make sure the thing we added actually align with our value. So it's a it's all the software. All the software features we added needs to be vented first about like does that fit to our value? If not, we are not going to add it. That really upset a lot of people. But I think that's important for us to, uh, to you know, uh, get to say no to things because we know our our capacity is limited. We want to make sure we're using them on things that matter to us the most. So that's like a few points that I feel like maybe make P five slightly different from other projects, but. Uh, Maintainer burnout, like contributor relationships, these are the things that I think um, are universal across projects. Yeah. David, you are muted. Sorry. Um, we're in the same room, so we're trying to juggle. <laughs> Um, all projects talk about sustainability challenges. Uh, you said you're full time. I'm curious, um, are you paid? Are you, um, is it through a foundation model? Um, yeah. How does that work? 
Yeah, I, I, uh, maybe this is also something that makes P5 different from others. Uh, is actually I'm in a paid full-time role leading P5, which is such a privilege uh, to do so. I know a lot of the other open source projects, you know, it starts with volunteers and the creators have been, or like the maintainers have been like using their volu volunteering their time for a long time. So when I first started this role, I was uh, uh, part-time leading it with uh, hourly, with, uh, like being built hourly, but it has always been a paid role. And then uh, the foundation got, uh, we, we got like a, a boost of donations uh, around NFT hype. So fan, all of, uh, cause a lot of the uh, creators, uh, NFT creators using tools like P5 and processing. So they donate a lot to the foundation. And then because of that donation, we can finally hire people full-time with benefits. Uh, so that's my, since then I've been like leading full-time for almost two and a half years. Uh, I would say like leading this project uh, in a full-time capacity with, with, with like a, uh, with a salary is so different from leading it with like, oh, hourly paid or like volunteer. Cause now I'm like, I can have my full attention to this project. And that's the first thing I think when I get out and, you know, uh, so that has really shifted our mindset uh, of leading this project. And for the new leads coming, they will be uh, paid full-time employee as well for the, uh, and, and all the uh, admin work and uh, is under the Processing Foundation, which is a nonprofit that supports projects like P5.js, P5 Web Editor and Processing Java. That's fantastic. Oops. And we also uh, like I I don't, I don't hold know. on. Uh, oh. Um, I'll jump in with another question. We have we're again having to juggle the 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 mics here. Um, you you said you were looking for contributors. Um, we have a lot of really capable technical students here, and. I think they might be excited to contribute. Um, I'm, and I'm always wondering like how to make those models work, whether it can be an internship, it can be something that's part of a class, but it's real work that they're doing instead of just a toy example. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on, on how to like enable students to get involved and do this kind of work? Uh, yeah, this is my second time talking at an OS Pro at the university, the first one that I did a talk was at the UC Santa Cruz OS Pro. Uh, uh, and I actually, before the, you know, the symposium at UN, I actually, I know some of the folks there because I saw a big wave of contribution from them a few years ago. Then I was very curious, who are those contributors? They all have the UC Santa Cruz OS Pro in their, on their uh, GitHub handle. So I do some research and then I find out the folks who are running that. So I send them a thank you note saying like, hey, thanks for bringing your students to this project. Um, and would like to, you know, collaborate with you with you more. Cause like, I think for a lot of the OSPO uh, directors or students in the OSPO, they might not know like what exactly they can do. So they would just learn, like look through all of our 200 open issues and see if there's anything they can help. So, but we feel like we can definitely collaborate with them, them more to have a more customized, um, you know, plan for the students. Like maybe for you, for you, UC Santa Cruz, they run a program like, uh, you know, like for in the summer for like a historic black college students to come uh, meet in person or online for a few, a uh, few months. And then they will work on like a open source project they selected. And a few summers ago, they were working on P5 projects. Um, so we found that like a, such a, a inspiring uh, model. So we're trying to like work with them more closely to think about how we can provide more structures uh, for the students who will be joining maybe in the future. Because uh, I think for them, they were like, we want to talk to maintainers. And we were like, yeah, we are. We want to talk to more contributors. Like it, it was just like the connection wasn't built. That's why I'm always like very excited to come to this uh, OSPO talks at like uh, universities because I know there are a lot of students who are interested in, in participating. So, um, and uh, we are trying the, from our side, it's something we are trying more to do is like we want to label more like good first issue. So for students who are 
for, for might be first time contributing to PFAR projects, they can use that label to filter the one that might be a good fit for them. And also we have a lot of like contribute docs that's available on our website and on our GitHub repository to help them get started. Um, and uh, uh, we don't have like official internship program uh, from our end yet. We might <laughs> in the future. Uh, but I think for not, right now, we're just like, uh, we're trying to accommodate the OSPO who reach out to us or who are doing work, quite interested in working with us to, to provide support for them. Like if you have a group of students and if we have needs, how can we make them match? Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and I think it has been inspiring to see like some of the students from the UC, UC Santa Cruz OSPO we actually uh, we're also working with them right now on 2.0 project, which is like a, a paid contribution project. Um, uh, so I think it, it, it's not like a big pay. It's like a, with like a standard, you know, the foundation hourly rate. Uh, but it's like our gesture of like, uh, of like um, recognizing their their contribution to that. Uh, in, so I think we can definitely discuss. Uh, offline or more how or, or more opportunities how the p5 community a p5 project can better support you know the ospo at gw and vice versa mm -hmm. no i don't you can say it again now um, oh, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm James. I'm over in the corner in the same room. I actually came over to the Portman School of Art, which is the art school here. Oh, there I am. Hello. Hello. All right, cool. Um, I teach at the Corcoran School of Art, and I'm I'm actually, I was less curious about P5JS. I'm familiar with it, and, you know, I was really into Dan Shipman stuff about five years ago. Um, but what I'm really interested in is I've got all these students, they're going to art school, they they think very much individually, but a lot of what's going on in the art world now is very much about community. And so I'm trying to figure out how do I teach these guys or how do I get them into situations where they have to collaborate? And I'm looking at open source and, you know, things like GitHub and, and I don't know, do you have um, like the way you manage all of your contributors is do you have like a document that surfaced that like I could like I just even looking at the yesterday I was looking at it because I was sending info to my students like you guys should come to this and I don't know where they are but anyway um do, do you have like some sort of public document that talks about how you manage all your contributors uh I don't think I have one single document about it yeah. but that's sort of how p5 community is run is uh cross it's like a scatter across a lot of different uh, documentations. Like when you go to our about page, you know, we have our access statement, our community statement. And when you go to our GitHub uh, repository, you can see our all contributor list and, and then links to issues of how we recognize different contributions. Um, so uh, this is a good reminder. Maybe we should uh, write more about, have a, have a place to like, for folks who want to know like how contribution is managed uh in the p5 uh, uh community but i uh i think sometimes you know we get i i will i will know more about like what the community want to learn or want to know more when i come to these talks because otherwise we're like we have all the documentation out there people should be able to know but you know that's just my assumption but we, maybe we can have like a more centralized one but i think about page would be the a good place to get started um, right yeah, and I think when you talk about like how to get students to collaborate and think more in the community, because um, I also teach a uh, intro to creative coding class at USC, I feel like uh, while my class doesn't touch upon open source just yet, I often ask the students to like, um, if someone figured out, a, like I teach P5 in my class. So if someone figured out like an issue first, I'm like, ask them like, oh, if you figure it out, can you teach your neighbors? Uh, you know, so they kind of created that sort of uh, study circle. And I uh, also say like, okay, for this, um, uh, if you couldn't figure this out, can you ask your neighbors if they figure it out? So we, we start with like smaller circle like that. And then uh, I also show their work, you know, within uh, uh, 
the two that work very often in the classroom, even if it's just like uh, in class workshops. And so they feel like comfortable to uh, be part of like this small community we created in classroom. And hopefully by the end, of, and a lot of actually my students after my class, they will, they will express their interest of like contributing to the P5 project because they were like, oh, it was like a very fun community experience in this classroom. So I want to experience that in a larger scale. So I have seen some students in the summer, they will come like open issue and tag me uh, on the P5 repository. Uh, so that has been really rewarding. Yeah, it just it seems like this is such a great case study, not just you know about P five, but like it's a great case study about how to how to collaborate, and it's it can it's extensible to other domains, like even just like getting a group of painting students to paint on a wall together and not kill each other, like this seems like a really good a good story to tell them. Yeah, and it's also like amazing to think about who you will meet on this sort of online space. You know, when someone opened an issue on GitHub who might be a student, high school student from India, they might get a response from a professor at London and then will be responded by someone in Brazil saying exactly uh, what their thoughts are. And then in that sort of, like often that sort of issue has multiple rounds of communication, you know, and you build friendship over this and and you got to meet people you never know you will like have a conversation with because you have like a, 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 a shared goal of like figuring this issue out together. Um, and eventually like maybe write a code together with like input from like more experienced contributors. Uh, so I feel like open source, like, uh, like it, it, you, you can learn so many different skills while contributing to open source, not just coding, but like also like working with the community, communication. Um, uh, so it has been just very interesting to observe from, from, from the maintainer end, because I tried like sometimes because I, I didn't come from a very technical background. So I, I feel like the part that I can do the most would be uh, mediate and uh, facilitate contributions. I, when, I, when there's a bug, my first instinct is not like, oh, let me go fix it. It's more like, oh, who will be the best person to fix this and make them be part of this? And how can we support them to fix this bug? Uh, so, and, um, and then uh, like, uh, who can we bring to like uh, give them advice if that contributor felt lost, you know? So those are the parts that I felt like has been a big part of my day-to-day -day job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was fantastic. Really appreciate it. Yeah, David, I'm so glad to uh, get your email to invite me to this and uh, let's definitely continue the conversation. And I think we are very excited about like uh, connecting more with OSPOs at universities because P5 and the Processing Foundation has a strong focus on education. We want to know more about like how our projects can serve your community better as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, I definitely want to talk more about um, the internship models um, and potential there. And one of the things that we're really trying to do is is how people educate them about open source. I think yeah. people have never heard of open source. Um, and, and so letting them know about this collaborative working model that's that that, that creates so many opportunities um, is really exciting to me. And mm -hmm. project's such a great entry level for non-STEM people to, to come come right in. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Uh, thank you so Thank much. you. Nice meeting y'all. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.